Here he is, one of the most fabulous figures in all prize fight history, Sugar Ray Robinson, who lost only one fight out of 133 bouts. The only man to beat him, Jake LaMotta, was subsequently beaten four times, and the last one was when Sugar Ray won the middleweight championship of the world. Here he is, getting ready for his first title defense of the middleweight title. There are the London reporters, including a young lady reporter on the left. And here is the challenger, Randolph Turpin. He is young. He's only uh, 23 years old. He had only 46 fights, and he lost two out of the 46, but he reversed those two losses. Here he is in his training quarters in Wales, waving down to a fine holiday crowd. Everybody in Great Britain was rooting for him, but very few felt that he could win. First off, he had never gone more than eight rounds in his life, and he was very young for the very clever... 11-year experience champion. This is London. It's still daylight, although it's quite late at night in those latitudes. The sun still gives quite a lot of light around between 9 and 10 o'clock. Here's the announcer announcing the two boxers. Robinson is also known very affectionately as his sugar ship. There's Randolph Turpin ready for the big test of his life. opening round, and this is the round, of course, when uh, the spectators, as well as the boxers, have a chance to study style. This is a brilliant audience here. Half of Burke's peerage is on hand, movie stars, big politicians, and, of course, the rank-and-file fans, all wedged into the hall here, watching Randolph Turpin with his back to us. He has a white stripe down his trunks and the initials R.A.T., it can be seen there in the lower right. Turpin has a, a rather jumping jack style. He looks like one of those 10 cent store monkeys on a stick occasionally as he flexes his knee. But the feature of this round is not only the referee cautioning them for a kidney punch here that Turpin landed on Ray Robinson, but the fact that Turpin showed absolutely no fear of Robinson. In fact, bullied him around and wailed him as if to say, I'm the boss in here. Turpin is far from the uh, overly impressed rookie. He's in here with the greatest fighter pound for pound the ring has ever seen, and he's acting as if he's the boss and he knows it. Right from the very first bell. Beautiful long left by Turpin. But it's in the clinches that he does most of the damage. Robinson digging for the body, trying to lower that guard. Notice how high Turpin carries his glove. Protects his chin well. The referee is Eugene Henderson. Glancing right off the cheekbone of Ray Robinson. Robinson digging with light left jabs. Notice that up-and-down elevator style of Turpin. They're pushing leather into each other's faces in the clinch. Beautiful right and a left hook staggered Robinson. He came back on his heels then. That was a stiff punch. No 
Those are the punches in close that Robinson had a great deal of trouble smothering. A brilliant champion, Robinson, but up against a very unorthodox box. Notice how relaxed uh, Turpin is in the right side of the picture there. Whether that was psychological warfare or not, we don't know, but he just acted as if this were just another outing and he didn't have a care in the world. He crossed himself as the gong sounded and out he comes for round two. It was in this round that Robinson suffered cuts inside his mouth. Notice that Robinson keeps circling clockwise to get away from Turpin's best punch and his stiffest hand, the one that does the most damage is the left. Robinson maneuvering but to throw his combination of punches, steps back and you'll note that Turpin moves in swiftly whenever Robinson steps back. Gives him no chance to get set. Robinson went down in the same kind of a bob as Turpin did then. But Robinson mostly fought standing up, Turpin bobbing up and down, presenting a very difficult target. Turpin uh, was four pounds heavier, but he acted as if he were much heavier and much stronger. He's a natural middleweight. And Robinson disinclined to fight too much in the clinches. That was the right that he keeps whipping over Robinson's left shoulder. Robinson had very little success blocking that. Robinson, the great champion that he is, is trying to devise a defense for this jack-in-the-box style of opponent who really is rough in those clinches. Both men trying to outfaint each other. up of Randy Turpin and here's another shot at him there is a picture of a relaxed man just out for a pleasant night and here he's fighting for the middleweight championship of the world for a packed house a $200,000 gate Ray trying to stab and hook, a beautiful hook by uh, Sugar Ray. His right was short, but he still shows flashes of his brilliance. There is a lot of head beating, a couple of good headaches in the making. When Robinson digs for the stomach, Turpin either steps back or lowers his legs, lowers his knees. Turpin lets Robinson push him back. Turpin, Turpin leans on Robinson. Trying to wear him 
down. Notice the wide stance on Turpin. Turpin almost went down then. A left hook. He was bobbing at the same time that Robinson fired his left. There's that overhand right to the head. Now the referee is cautioning both men again. This is the second warning. Holding and hitting. Stop it. Yes, sir. Eugene Henderson, the referee. A fine left hook caught Robinson and hurt him. This was the round where Robinson's face began to puff up. On the left side of Robinson's face. You can see a swelling there under his left eye. Been a rather rocky start for this great champion. Bleeding from the mouth, bleeding from the nose, puffed under the eye, and in against a very difficult style to solve. Turpin bobbing again, coming up underneath. Another lecture. Don't hold with your hand, Ray. Okay, here we go. That's the end of the round. Up to this point, uh, Ray Robinson had no new moves that were a surprise to Turpin. And probably the explanation for that is that Turpin took all the movies of all the Ray Robinson fights and studied them very carefully. He not only studied Robinson, but he studied other great fighters, like Jack Dempsey, and he has adopted a few. Of course, he doesn't have a style like Dempsey's, but he, he adopted uh, some of that bob and weave business that Dempsey was very good at. Here he is still bullying Ray around in the clinches, and another lecture. Don't hold and hit, probably. There you can see the wide stance on Turpin, almost four feet between his legs at times. Robinson holds his legs much closer together. Turpin also has loose shoelaces, where they're tied in long bows. Robinson hurt there. That was on his nose, and his nose bled quite a bit. No rest. Turpin keeps pressing his man. Robinson moving back, trying to survey the situation. Great champion, Robinson, but he doesn't know quite what to do. This is the first time I've seen... Uh, Randolph Turpin, and as a sports writer, I've seen quite a few great boxers, and I'm impressed by this lad. Good hard puncher and strong. Drops down like an elevator every now and then and punches whiz over his head. Robinson landed a nifty left there. That long left, it's like shoving a two by four out the window. Bam! Down and up. Here's where he did most of the damage in the clinches. Very strong. Bullied and wailed away. Robinson, a good, clever, fancy boxer, is trying to make a boxing match out of it and have the fight his way, but Turpin is making Robinson fight Turpin's way. Robinson tried to spin his man and backed into the referee nearly.
Ray finished in his corner, but he looked a little weary sitting down. No Turpin puts his own mouthpiece in with those thumbs of his. Quite a feat. Few boxers do that. Up and down, trying to invite leads. And as he backed away, he barely was clipped. He was hit with a beautiful right then. That looping right hand over Robinson's left shoulder did a terrific amount of damage. That's the advantage of that bobbing style. He's making Robinson do a lot of missing. And Robinson is sharp. He's had uh, six fights in Europe. He had to be in shape to come into this bout. Hmm. There was an opening as wide as a barn door. Robinson backing away and his tormentor still after him. Down and up and underneath. That's a long pass left. Robinson has little chance to parry it. Dang, that was a real hard blow. Now he's got him on the run. This was a sad moment for Robinson. He took a bad beating in here, but he's fighting back now with a body barrage and holds on to rest. There's an interesting study in facial expressions. Very calm, poker face, Turpin. Most of his scoring after Robinson did his leading and was backing away to get set again for a new combination. He's got wide stance, good four feet, and a solid basis for a hard, crisp punch. Both men, beautiful shoulder muscles, good punching power there. Here's an excellent close-up of that damaging right. Turpin just wailed away all night long. Robinson didn't know how to tie that uh, arm up. As soon as Robinson backs up, that's the signal for Turpin to move in. and out slowly still jabbing rather softly Robinson's eye is beginning to swell still bleeding from the mouth and nose those long jabs are cutting his face up Turpin has coil spring legs he starts a left and lunges with it at the same time Up and under, and Ray just backs away. Ray has been using very few uppercuts to the body and rights to the heart up to now. Mostly a soft left jab digging in there. There's that punishing right, and he's just handling him like a rag doll. There's the stronger man and the boss in those clinches. taken quite a plastering in this round. This is the round where a gash was opened up under the left eye as well as a cut above it. That was the first time Ray whipped an uppercut in.
pressing, giving his man no rest. In boxing slang, he's known as a busy mechanic in there. Flanking blow. He's at the other right, puffing to under the eye. Ray is taking quite a beating here, but he's gallantly fighting back at the heart of a real champion. He's trying that right uppercut again. Turpin fights three minutes out of every round. No stalling. Still pressing relentlessly. That hurts. Sometimes the face tells the story. Let's study Ray's. Little gargle. Here he is. Still looking calm and relaxed. Unmarked. Battery's all charged up. He's not out of wind. Uh, some of us boxing riders have been trying to find names for Randolph Turpin, and he's been called a brown Billy Con with a punch, but he, he has a, a blend of various styles. Good straight English left, and he reminds us a little bit of Tommy Farr, the way he bobs up and down on his knees. And that wide st stance is distinctly his own. There's that right in the clinches again, and it's self-evident by now that Ray Robinson is in good shape. Otherwise, he would have gone down under this terrific battering long ago. A real champion. Staying up and taking a tremendous beating. It was in this round that a gash was opened up even more by an accidental headbutt. Turpin uh, is with his on the left now, has more than just uh, a strong body. He must be a very adroit boxer in order to avoid a lot of the sharpshooting punches of Ray Robinson, because Robinson is a good marksman and is now a good catcher. Damn. Robinson's punches in the clinches look feeble alongside of the hard smashes of Turpin. Look at those shoulders on Turpin. See, there's where the bobbing and weaving pays, because Ray's left hook whistled harmlessly uh, over Turpin's head. He just ducked quickly down. Robinson was hurt with that right. He's backing up now to think things over. This was one of the best rallies that Ray made here in the seventh round in London. scored well with a right and he's whipping away with a nice barrage at the body. Robinson certainly looked the more weary of the two. It's an old axiom in sport that if uh, what you're doing is not winning, why switch your style? And Robinson is switching now. He's shooting for the body with uh, rights to the heart and right uppercuts. Got that right out there. Bang. Here's the right uppercut that did stagger Turpin. And another right. That was a very good exchange. Turpin warned for using the top of his head. They touch gloves to show no hard feelings.
That right to the body again score, and that was a beautiful right under the heart. Previous to this round, uh, Ray Robinson had been punching down. Now he's whipping that right uppercut in there. Another right by Ray. Turpin half spun him then into a left hook. Not a moment's rest from gong to gong. Ray occasionally tries to, what they call, eat up the clock. But Turpin won't give him any rest. Beautiful right by Ray. You can see how Ray changed his style. Starting with this round, going more for the body with that right. He caught him again with the right. Turpin takes a punch very well, as well as hands him out. He's a good, solid puncher with both hands, but he doesn't have a glass chin, which used to be standard FOB equipment of a lot of British boxers in the past. Here is a real rugged man. Ray, head down, has had a very rough, a surprisingly rough night. Round nine is very important because this is the first time that uh, Randolph Turpin here has gone over eight rounds in his professional life. Full of ginger with that left hook. He throws a hook and a jab with that left. He's got a lot of guns, a lot of equipment. He really bullies in there. Robinson still gamely fighting back. Robinson digging, digging, trying to get uh, Turpin's guard down. Turpin holding his gloves up nicely. Turpin, with both gloves in front of his face, can shoot out an awfully fast left jab. He's got a long left arm, or at least it looks long. Beautiful right by Ray, right on the button. Turpin is resting now. Turpin was hurt. There it goes. Whips that up like a bolo punch. That speared Ray and he hurt. He's hurt. He hurt him. Ray looking over this corner. Pretty weary boy right now. champion that Ray is, he still hasn't been able to solve a Turpin style. Doesn't quite know what to do with him in the clinches. Can't belt him hard enough coming in. There he is. 
is Randolph Turpin, the middleweight champion of Great Britain, coming out for round 10. Turpin has the white uh, stripe down each side of his trunks. Ray Robinson, the middleweight champion, trying to keep his crown from going to his challenger. England has not had a middleweight world champion since 1891. That right to the body is softening up uh, Turpin. Ray's strategy so far is paying dividends. Again, he pumps it under the heart, banging away to the body. Turpin, very difficult to nail to the head. Ray is switching his attack. Notice in this round that uh, Turpin, not quite as aggressive as he was in the previous uh, rounds. In fact, he had, Robinson has him backing up. Robinson missed with a terrific right uppercut then. He tried to time it as Turpin came in rather slowly for Turpin. Turpin usually comes in like a flash. Turpin back on his wide stance, almost like a rocking chair stance. Beautiful right under the heart by Sugar Ray. He hasn't given up. He's had plenty of rocky rounds. His face is bleeding. He's weary, but he's still slugging. Turpin pushing a little bit with that left now. He had been sharp and hard with it. It's interesting to speculate whether Ray's body punches have slowed up Turpin or whether Turpin is coasting because he's in new territory now, never having gone 10 rounds in his life. And he's got five more to go. Ray started the right and changed his mind. doing an excellent job keeping the fight clean with his frequent lectures there's the end of the round and quite a bit of a pause the Englishmen have been unused to fistic success in competition with Americans and they're delighted at the wonderful showing Randolph Turpin here has made up to this point Turpin, with his unorthodox style, has the gears and Ray's brain clicking. But uh, Robinson fans can console themselves with the thought that uh, many other great champions uh, lost to unorthodox styles the first time around and then came back later to reverse them. Joe Lewis uh, lost to Schmeling. Schmeling had a looping right hand he was unable to solve, just as Ray here can't solve that bobbing up and down style. And uh, Tunney was beaten by Windmill Harry Greb the first couple of times until he learned how to solve Greb's style. Joe Gans and Batley Nelson are other instances. So Ray Robinson may solve this style. In a return match, it'll have about as much interest as the Dempsey Tunney fights. corner occasionally for advice. It's very disconcerting, that uh, style of uh, Turpin's. All of a sudden, he just drops down till his head is almost belt buckle high, and then up he comes underneath. That hurt Ray. He's got him running now. A 
whizzing left hook. Ray sliding back like a real champ. Look at that. Shots at those shots at the body. Ray is a real champion. When he's hurt worst, he fights back hardest. Wow. That was a real miss. It's also a sign that a boxer is tiring when he misses by that wide a margin. left hook by Robbie. Turpin appears to be stepping on his shoelaces every now and then, especially when he leans away back. Slippery, uh, slippery boxer. He's a good, uh, very adroit man at drawing leads and pulling away from them and countering. Ray needs a lot of attention now, and he had a good repair job done on his face by George Gainsford. Here's the unmarked uh, turpin, a slight swelling on his left cheekbone. with the white stripe and the initials R-A-T on his left leg. Turpin is stepping up the attack now. He had been coasting for two or three rounds, probably on the advice of his seconds. He was well seconded and he was well briefed for this fight. He seems to know every move of Robinson's. What to do in the clinches, what to do when Ray jabs. study of slow motion pictures and other fight action pictures is paying good dividends. Beautiful right to the stomach. Robinson isn't licked yet. He's taking a bad battering, but he's trying to pull this out, holding that right up there for a one open knockout shot, if possible, on the chin. been knocking over uh, European champions like uh, bowling pins. He had fought himself into shape. He's definitely not out of shape. There was a wonderful combination that just missed. Pretty boxing move. Typical of Robinson's flashy style. That a beautiful right. That hurt Turpin. There was one of the best punches that Robinson threw all night. Turpin is not coming out of that clinch in a hurry. He's fighting back, though, two beautiful left jabs. And another. Robinson now learning to go down when Turpin goes down. down together again. That's the way Joe Lewis fought uh, Uskadum. When Uskadum went low, Joe went low, so both heads were at the same level. Now we're all ready for the critical home stretch. Here is Randolph Turpin. Looks like he's spending a nice summer afternoon on the porch. He has white stripes on his trunks. This, these are the rounds in which uh, stamina play a great part. And you can bet also that a great champion like Robinson is trying to pull every trick in his bag to save his title from slipping away to this young Englishman. 
Ray Robinson is 31 years old. Randy Turpin carrying the fight to him here with the white stripes down his trunks on the left is 23 years old. 31 and 23. Down on one knee almost. Oh, look at those shots. Turpin is really battering his man around now. He's opened up. He evidently was coasting the two or three rounds previous when he showed a little sluggishness. He come up underneath there and the top of his head caught uh, Robinson right under the chin. You could see Ray's head pop back. Robinson holding that right poise, trying to get a knockout punch in. He's taken a bad battering, but his gallant heart has kept him going. Here's that face again, he was staggered. Rubber leg, he's backing up. Now he fights back. Look how strong Turpin looks in those clinches. out now with his left. Usually he pumps it sharp. Robinson backing out of those clinches now. He's getting hurt pretty badly in the clinches. Nice left hook by Ray. Turpin has studied those movies so well that he sort of ignores those low digs at the stomach. Robinson here as a preliminary to using his right. Here was a fight scientifically blueprinted by a good board of strategy in Randolph Turpin's corner. And they're playing for big stakes. Middleweight championship of the world. Now another little lecture. Referee Henderson, watch the top of your head, my boy. No budding, accidental or otherwise. That's the end of round 13. And this bejeweled and brilliant crowd here with members of royalty and diplomats are staring fascinated because they certainly didn't expect to see Randolph Turpin put on such a brilliant boxing exhibition against such a master boxer, of course, as Ray Robinson. He's outmaneuvering him at every turn. And, of course, what he has is a good punch in either hand and a lot of strength in those clinches. He really pounds you with that left hook. You can see Ray's back jarring from the blow. Still game, pressing the fight, but little feeble with that right. Turpin paying no attention to uh, raise the shoulder feints. He has his man really studied. In fact, he threw a right lead just as Ray was fainting with his shoulder. No rest. As soon as Ray steps back to assemble himself and get all pretty and fancy Danish, boom, he moves right in on him. Ray needs a little time to prepare an attack, and that's the psychological moment when Turpin has been moving in. He's done it very often, this fight. Just pops that over and lays it right in there. Almost hit the referee that time. Ray is going to have to study some movies on how to tie up that right hand in the clinches. You can bet they'll look this and run this over and over and over again in Robinson's camp because the buildup is terrific for the return bout. It's got all the flavor of the Dempsey Tunny days. And so this action will be watched and run and rerun as Robinson studies himself. 
like a football coach scouting an intricate play. What was he doing to me in there? Bang! Trying to spin his man with his hand on the nape of his neck. Turpin too strong. Turpin seems to just back out of punching range and then boom, shoot in. That wonderful balance. And he's set always to throw a terrifically hard punch with either hand. That's the remarkable part of it. Ray moves around and is set to throw a hard punch with his right, only. Now he's in retreat, now he's moving after. This is where Ray was really hurt. Ray said later he thought he was going out. He was hurt and staggered. One more round, and it seems like a weary three minutes ahead. Turpin all relaxed. Ray hasn't had a hard shot at his head, with one or two exceptions, all through the fight. And of course, he's not cut up or marked in any way. <laughs> left moving him back. See how he ignores those little left-handed digs of Ray's? Ray missed a hard right. You can imagine what's going through his head as he sees this title slipping away from him. What can I do to win? A hard man to tag, difficult man to fight, a hard puncher who can hurt you. Just keeps back long enough to get Ray overreaching and then jumps in. Ray laying his head down like a little baby there for a minute. Needed a few seconds rest. Turpin gave him a little pat in the ribs. Getting in the closing minutes now of one of the finest fights ever held in modern times. And a stunning surprise. Randolph Turpin with the white trunks, white stripe on his trunks, who's never fought over eight rounds in his life, only 23 years old, in against the great Ray Robinson, who lost only one bout out of 133. And here they are coming down to the wire now in Earl's Court in London with the middleweight championship of the world at stake. It's a terrifically dramatic moment in a great fight. There's a great champion in there. That's no lug. That's Sugar Ray Robinson against a fine young English boy, Randy Turpin. Ray still pounding away right down to the final second. Face bleeding, his head groggy. Outmaneuvered, outscored, and there he is still wrapping away at the body. His one hope is a knockout punch, perhaps a cut eye, anything to win. And Turpin, of course, isn't stalling to this extent that he backs up until he gets Ray off balance and then moves in. That's where Turpin scored many a point. In fighting. And the clinches. And it's over. There they are. They put their arms around each other. Sugar Ray Robinson being escorted to his corner by Randolph Turpin. That certainly was one of the greatest fights of modern times. And it's certainly, there's the new champion. It's certainly one of the best I've ever seen as a sports writer. Both boxers deserve praise. Both were great fighters and great sportsmen. There's a deliriously happy crowd there in London, swarming around Randolph Turpin's corner. 
There's Sugar Ray, a gallant champion, even in defeat. He said, I had no alibis. And the new champion, Randy Turpin. Good luck, Randy. We'll be seeing you in America soon.